Look at this picture. What a beautiful picture. Everything we know about economics is in this picture. Gross domestic product, inflation, unemployment, fiscal policy, monetary policy, supply, demand, money supply, money demand, economic growth, and so on, and so on, is in this picture. Aggregate demand and aggregate supply. The ADAS model. And the ADAS model is one of the most difficult topics in macroeconomics because it has everything. In this video, you will learn what is the ADAS model and how to solve exercises on this topic during your tests. To understand what is aggregate demand and what is aggregate supply, you need to first understand supply and demand. Supply and demand of a single product. For example, supply and demand for bananas. Oh, banana. Banana. On a vertical axis, we put price, price of bananas. And on a horizontal axis, we put quantity, quantity of bananas. And we'll have supply created by sellers. and demand created by buyers. That was supply and demand of a single simple product. And now we'll apply it to everything produced and consumed in a country. We'll apply it to the entire economy. This was supply and demand of a single product. And when we apply supply and demand of a single product to everything produced in the economy, we'll get aggregate demand and aggregate supply. And instead of the price of a single product, we'll have price, which is the general price level. It's a price for everything produced in this country. For example, the CPI, Consumer Price Index, or the GDP deflator. And instead of quantities of a single product, we'll have quantities of all goods and services produced, which is the GDP, Gross Domestic Product, denoted by the capital letter Y. And instead of the demand for a single product, we'll have aggregate demand. Demand for all goods and services. Aggregate demand is how many goods and services are bought by people, businesses, governments, and foreigners at each price level. Now, if you studied economics, what I just said should remind you something. What people buy, what businesses buy, governments and foreigners buy. That's the expenditure approach to the GDP. C plus I plus G plus an X. Consumption plus business investments plus government purchases plus net exports. That's why aggregate demand shows the expenditure approach to the GDP. Consumption, business investments, government purchases and net exports. Let's now discuss aggregate supply. And here we'll have not one, but two aggregate supply curves. And to understand why we have two supplies, we need to talk about two schools of economics, the classical economics and the Keynesian economics. So let's discuss two schools of economics. Classical economic school. Classical economic school was developed in the 18th and 19th centuries. Classical economists were interested in one thing and one thing only – the long run. They would study an economy over long periods of time – 10 years and more. What's happening to the economy right now? They wouldn't care. Because they believe that whatever's happening today will pass. If there is an economic boom, it will die down. If there is a crisis, the economy will eventually recover. 
and because the classical economists believe that the economy will always self-correct, they were against the government involvement. The smaller the government, the better the economy. And then something happened. The Great Depression. When the Great Depression hit, economists proved useless. When will the Great Depression stop? Economists didn't know. What to do to end the economic crisis? Economists didn't know. How to help the unemployed and the poor? For seven years, economists did nothing. They just enjoyed the show while the Great Depression was destroying everything. But after seven years, one economist had a solution. John Maynard Keynes. John Maynard Keynes raged against this obsession of the classical economic school with a long run. Because in the long run we are all dead. He argued that the short run is important and no, the economy will not self-correct because economic crises are caused by falling demands and if we do nothing to fix the economy, the economic crisis may last for a long time just like the Great Depression did. He argued that when there is an economic crisis, when no one spends any money, the government must step in and spend money to revive the economy. Keynes argued that it is the duty of the government to fix an economy. And that was how the Keynesian economics came to life. So we have two economic schools, which means that we have two aggregate supply curves. Classical economic school focuses on the long run and it gives us the long run aggregate supply. The Keynesian economic school focuses on the short run and it gives us the short run aggregate supply. The long run aggregate supply is a vertical line. It's a vertical line because prices don't affect the GDP in the long run. Because in the long run the economy produces this much, this GDP, called the potential output. In the long run the economy produces its potential output. And this potential output is not affected by prices. Prices can be high or low, it doesn't matter. In the long run, the economy will still produce this much potential output. And potential output is the output the GDP produced at full employment. But if prices don't affect the potential output, then what does? What does affect the long run GDP? Economists call them four factors of productivity. And the four factors of productivity are physical capital, tools and equipment, human capital, skills and education, natural resources, and technology, which is our understanding of the world. The long run aggregate supply came from the classical economic school. Let's now draw the short-run aggregate supply that came from the Keynesian economic school. And the short-run aggregate supply curve is a classical upward sloping curve. And it's upward sloping because the higher the prices, the more sellers want to sell. Why is that? Why is the long-run aggregate supply a vertical line? And the short-run aggregate supply is an upward-sloping line. 
the low run aggregate supply is a vertical line because prices don't affect the GDP in the long run. And prices don't affect the GDP in the long run because wages adjust to prices. Imagine that prices go up. There is high inflation. When prices go up, workers demand high wages. And when wages go up, suppliers, producers are neither better off nor worse off. They are neutral. They benefit from high prices, but they lose from paying high wages. So in the end, they are as good as before. That's why prices don't affect the long-run supply. That's why the long-run supply is a vertical line. But in the short run, wages are often sticky. When wages don't adjust to prices, not immediately. Suppliers, producers don't want to pay high wages to their workers. So they will try to keep wages as they are for as long as they can. There is time between the moment prices went up and the moment wages go up. And during this time, sellers benefit from high prices and they don't yet lose from paying high wages. During this time, during the short run, sellers want to sell more and more. So that the higher the prices, the more sellers want to sell. And that's why the short run aggregate supply is an upward sloping line. And the short run aggregate supply is affected by the same four factors of productivity and by input prices, by prices for production inputs. And the most important input price is the price of labor which is wage. Let's now put all these curves together on the same graph. So we have aggregate demand, long run aggregate supply, and the short run aggregate supply. The aggregate demand includes the expenditure approach to the GDP, consumption, investments, government purchases, and net exports. The long-run aggregate supply includes the four factors of productivity. The short-run aggregate supply includes the same four factors of productivity and input prices. The intersection is called the long-run equilibrium. At the long-run equilibrium, the economy produces its potential output. And there is an equilibrium price level. And this is our aggregate demand, aggregate supply model. And that's why this beautiful picture represents the entire economy. In this picture, we put supply and demand, GDP, prices, consumption, investments, exports, imports, wages, physical capital, human capital, technology, natural resources. Everything we know about economics is in this picture. And now you understand this model. Congratulations, good for you.